Hello and welcome to Understanding Teen Brain Science and How Drugs Impact the Brain. My name is Phoenix Kawamoto and I am the Project Director for the Greater New Paltz Community Partnership, a drug-free communities grant project serving youth and families living in the Greater New Paltz area. Over the course of this video, you will receive information regarding adolescent brain development and an introduction to neurobiology, with particular emphasis on how different substances impact the brain. You will also gain a better understanding of how teen brains are more vulnerable to negative effects of substances, including addiction. The human brain is an incredibly powerful and complex organ. We live in an exciting time as brain science uncovers and discovers vital information that continues to enhance our understanding and empowers us to make better informed choices. We continue to see examples of how our brains are robust or resilient especially in response to disturbances the system is designed to handle. Yet our brains are fragile to rare events and flaws in the design or programming. Everyone would agree our brains are incredibly complex. Much like the wheel in this image, our brains have evolved over time. The image of the fast-moving traffic in the upper right-hand corner provides a wonderful visual metaphor for the environmental and cultural changes that are happening at an extremely rapid pace. The combination of uncertainty, pressures, and increasing demands often contribute to chronic stress, heart disease, mental illness, and addiction. The medical field has known for some time that addiction is a medical condition. With growing scientific knowledge and study, addiction is now seen as a brain disease due to the complex interactions and biochemical changes that take place within the brain. The brain has approximately 100 billion nerve cells with over one quadrillion connections. As we look closely at one of these connection sites, we can see the neurotransmitters in the presynaptic bud. These important chemicals are released into the synapse, or the gap between the neurons, in order to carry the message or signal being sent. There are different types of neurotransmitters. Each has its specific functions. Addiction is also viewed as a developmental disease, since it often starts in adolescence and for some in childhood. The majority of young adults who enter treatment for addiction often started before 18. We see here that those young people who start using alcohol and other drugs between the ages of approximately 14 and 21 have an increased risk of addiction. The younger the age of onset or use, the greater the possibility of addiction. For example, those teens who start using alcohol prior to age 15 are four times more likely to suffer with an alcohol dependence in adulthood. This is one of the major reasons why prevention efforts work to delay the age of onset. Brain research, with the help of amazing technological advances and equipment, have uncovered and discovered many important facts that shed light on the biological and developmental changes taking place during adolescence. We will discuss several of them here. First, we know with puberty, hormones and the hormonal systems come online or are activated. As they do, youth experience many physical changes to their bodies, but they also experience mood swings and heightened sensitivity. This is in part due to the impact on the amygdala, which plays many important functions within our limbic system. The limbic system is involved with emotion, emotional learning and memory through association, and motivation, including risk-taking behavior. During adolescence, the amygdala is more sensitive and often becomes easily triggered, adding to anxiety, moodiness, etc. The nucleus accumbens is also undergoing significant development during adolescence, which is believed to contribute to an increase in desire for high excitement low energy behavior in teens. The nucleus accumbens also plays an important role in addiction because it is part of the reward system of the brain. The reward system helps us remember the things that give us pleasure and from an evolutionary standpoint helps sustain life. For example, two vital life functions, eating food and procreation or sex, 
trigger release of dopamine, a key neurotransmitter. Dopamine does many things, but is a major feel-good chemical that is vital within the reward system. The study of dopamine has transformed the scientific understanding of addiction. Dopamine travels along the pleasure pathway of the brain where it is funneled into the nucleus accumbens. The nucleus accumbens then communicates with the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for our decision making and impulse control. The prefrontal cortex is the last part of the brain to mature and is not fully online until approximately 25 to 26 years of age. This can make it extremely challenging for teens who are using drugs to not act upon the craving triggers and impulses generated by high dopamine levels and signals from the nucleus accumbens. Additionally, synaptic pruning takes place during adolescence. Remember that we are born with a tremendous number of brain cells, many more than we need. During adolescence, the brain begins to prune back the connections that are not being used. What that means is the connections being used the most will become strengthened and reinforced in the system through biochemical programming. Those behaviors that are not practiced will fade or have weakened associations in importance. If a teen begins using substances in a more frequent way, those behavior patterns become stronger over time through repetition. For example, if a teen begins to use alcohol or other drugs as part of her or his coping skills for stress, difficult social situations, or managing emotions, they run the risk of becoming dependent on that substance as they program their brain with repetition. We know that not everyone who uses and misuses a substance will become addicted. Dr. Ruben Baylor from NIDA, the National Institute on Drug Abuse, uses his Swiss cheese analogy to discuss how risk and protective factors are at work with each of us. There are many known factors that can reduce or increase our risk for addiction. Of course, there are other factors that contribute, such as frequency of use, quantity used, the substance of choice, since different drugs vary in the percentage of users who become addicted to them. Here we see genetics, development, parental style, education, and other environmental factors such as neighborhood and social environment. But we are going to remain focused on development for this conversation. If we think of the brain as a computer, a supercomputer at that, remember that during adolescence the brain is in the middle of major system programming. Complex chemical codes are being generated Integral components of these codes are the neurotransmitters. One of the most significant of these is dopamine. When drugs enter the brain, they alter and hijack the code. Here we see how different substances interfere with or mimic specific neurotransmitters. Cocaine, dopamine. Marijuana, the endocannabinoids. Opiates, impact GABA. LSD, glutamate. And ecstasy, interferes with serotonin. Despite their many differences, most abused substances have an amazing ability to hijack one key neurotransmitter line of code in particular, and that is dopamine. As I mentioned earlier, dopamine is extremely important for many different areas of functioning. One of its key functions is in our reward system and our experience of pleasure. The graphs you are about to see will illustrate the amounts of dopamine released naturally within the brain for food and sex. In the first picture, you see that once food is provided, dopamine levels increase and then decrease over time. In this second graph, you see the increase of dopamine with sexual arousal. Natural rewards elevate dopamine levels, but drugs are amazingly more effective. As you look at these graphs, you will see how different substances release varied amounts of dopamine in the brain, amphetamine providing the highest amount among those depicted here. It is this flood of dopamine in the brain that creates the high feeling. Please note that each substance has a different rate of decrease in dopamine levels. Some decrease rapidly and others are much slower. Over time and repeated use, these drugs decrease the amount of dopamine present in the system, partly because the brain stops producing its own natural dopamine. This leaves the substance user feeling down, uncomfortable, unhappy, etc. They become dependent on the drug to feel happy, 
and with tolerance we'll use more of the chemical to feel high and eventually more just to feel normal or functional. In this image you are seeing a decrease in red and orange areas of the brain scans of those addicted to the different substances cocaine, alcohol, and heroin as compared to the non-user. The colors red and orange are used to show high levels of functioning dopamine receptors. So when we think of the teen years as prime programming years, we want our youth to use a keyboard that is not altered by substances. For the effects of keyboard scrambling are time dependent. What that means is if someone is using drugs after the brain has gone through its programming phase, we can expect to see temporary difficulties in running the program. But if they're using substances during these prime programming years, we are much more likely to see persistent glitches in the programming, meaning in brain functioning. Over the course of this video, we have discussed specific developmental changes that are taking place within the adolescent brain. This includes the increased emotional sensitivity and moodiness often created when the hormonal systems come online. This is in addition to heightened sensitivity already present from the amygdala, an important part of the limbic system. There are several key points regarding the nucleus accumbens we discussed. Developmentally speaking, it helps teens enjoy more high-risk, low-energy activities. And in regards to addiction, it plays a major role in the reward system, which generates craving for dopamine levels created by drugs and other substances and addictive behaviors, such as gambling, sex, sugar. You may recall the prefrontal cortex is vital when it comes to one's ability to make decisions, resist impulsivity, and problem-solve. This part of the brain is not fully developed until age 25 to 26. The process of synaptic pruning helps strengthen and reinforce the behaviors, connections, and pathways used the most. Those pathways not being used will die off or are disconnected. When we look at the impact on emotions, risk-taking behavior, and increased risk for addiction, we see that with increased sensitivity and heightened emotions, some teens may be more likely to turn to substances to manage or cope with their emotions. They learn to self-medicate. Others who have heightened need for risk-taking behavior and excitement may turn to substances to get the rush they are seeking. And when you factor in the impaired ability to think through a situation and the possible negative consequences, and when you factor in the impaired ability to think through a situation and the possible negative consequences, it's easy to understand how some teens may make some of the dangerous choices they do. Skill building and support in this area can be very helpful. During this video we provided a brief overview of neurotransmitters and how they aid the neurons when messages or signals are being sent. While there are several types of neurotransmitters, each with its own function, dopamine is extremely important and has become the key to unlocking the mystery of addiction. With time and further brain research, we are learning more about specific substances and addiction. We will be sharing some of this new science regarding marijuana in our next video, Emerging Marijuana Science, which discusses some of the recent findings as well as areas of concern regarding the impact of marijuana use on teen brains. For more information on adolescent brain development, please check out Dr. Jill Bolt Taylor's TED Talk entitled The Neuroanatomical Transformation of the Teenage Brain. Dr. Taylor is a neurobiologist respected for her knowledge on the subject and appreciated for her engaging and animated teaching style. You can find the link to this talk on our website, gnpcp.org. Simply click on the Educational Resources tab and the TED Talks subgroup. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you have found the information helpful and easy to understand. Have a great day.